we are here at uh, TOA 2015 Tech Open Air. I'm uh, Max from Motherboard, and I'm here with uh, three excellent uh, researchers and people from the practical field of robotics. And we just did a panel about uh, how to train a robot, and we didn't have enough time, so we're really happy to elaborate on that a bit more here and now. So um, to my right is uh, Noel Sharkey, a roboticist and uh, someone who's worked in the... Uh the intersection of ethics and robotics in the uh, past years. Then we have Ludovic Rigetti, who's at the uh, Max Planck Institute uh, for Autonomous Systems in Tübingen, and I guess safe to say one of the leading roboticists in the world. Um, and then we have Timo Talas from Zen Robotics, who are putting um, intelligent or learning robots uh, into the practical field with their uh, waste management company. So. Um, I guess the way we're going to start is what actually does intelligence mean when we talk about robotics and what how does it change what intelligence means when we talk about human when we look at the progress that we're seeing in robotics in the past years um if uh, from from our point of view what the intelligence means in the robotics is that as opposed to to the traditional robots which are pre-programmed to do certain uh, repetitive movements or follow certain logic, uh, we train the robots. We train them either through examples or, or then uh, we train them through trial and error. So I think we need to be very careful when we talk about intelligence uh, because this has nothing to do with uh, what humans are doing. Uh, I'd rather like the term autonomy so it means that robots are able to do things by themselves, take a certain number of decisions by themselves. But this is nowhere close to, to what we think intelligence is in humans. So I think it's, very it's a dangerous term to use. I'd, I'd rather use autonomy from my point of view. And why is it dangerous? Because when you talk about intelligence, you relate to humans and you appeal to uh, some idea of what, what the human brain is and what we can do. And uh, robots do not do that. They are far, far away from being able to do that. So sometimes y it gives too much expectations or maybe raise too much fear about what robotics is. That's why I, I'd rather not um, make the connection with the human brain. We see Ludwig's a, a real robotics researcher, and, and I, I agree with him entirely about the word intelligence. I think it, can, it has been unfortunate and I interviewed John McCarthy, his last interview before he died, I did a radio interview with him, and he said himself that he wished he hadn't called it artificial intelligence. And it does lead to a lot of confusion because it makes a relationship between humans that you're already making the relationship rather than demonstrating that there is a relationship, and it leads to a lot of things. But I like Marvin Minsky's old definition of artificial intelligence which from the 1960s, which was the science of making things do, making machines do things that would require intelligence if they were done by a human. Now that doesn't mean that the machine is being intelligent, it simply means that the machine is doing something that if we did it, it would require intelligence rather than just some brute force thing. So really intelligence should be thought about in that way. So machines can replace us in lots of different ways. But if you start talking about intelligence, people then start thinking about consciousness and sentience and those sort of things. And that's very dangerous ground because it's dangerous in the sense that people like the military, the police, lots of people will get the wrong idea of what artificial intelligence and robotics are and then they will start making plans for the future based on that wrong idea. And that wrong idea mainly comes from science fiction, but not completely. Um, you can always add something or reply to it. Um, so when, w <laughs> when we talk about um, robots, then the term autonomous robots is something else that uh, causes a lot of confusion, I think, because um, what actually is it that we can delegate to the robots and that what is it that we should delegate to the robots? One thing is always that you hear people talking, well, the rise of the machines and robots are going to take our jobs. It seems they've somehow taken over some weird uh, anti-pod position from what the immigrants used to be, and it's both uh, just wrong and not mm, pretty far away from the reality, I think. Um, so yeah, what's what's your take on that? 
I just want to be the, the definition guy. I mean, autonomy, autonomy was a real another mistake that we made back in robotics in the 50s because what autonomy meant initially and why it was used was robots used to have this massive tether on them because computers were so large. I mean, computers were like filling this room and so they'd have this big long tether on them and eventually it got to the point where you could put the computer on the robot rather than having the tenor, te uh, whatever it's called, the, the wire connecting it. And so they called those autonomous at that point. But now there's a whole philosophical concept of autonomy, which is about free will and do we have free will. There's a whole political concept of autonomy, autonomous countries, autonomous action, etc. And it's not the same at all. It's a completely different kind of autonomy. And there's nothing I know more that confuses people than that term. I'm sure Ludovic will, these two will tell you about what it means in robotics. Um. Since my background is different, I, I, I work in, in a company uh, making robots and my kind of a time frame is shorter thinking one year or two years ahead, not 10 or 20, 30 years ahead. Uh, my, my thinking of these problems and, and moral questions are somewhat more short-sighted and, and, and from, the, from the company's point of view, in this context, whether we call, call it an autonomous or, or intelligent, wha what it means to us is that you can take them into a problems that like five years ago were not possible to do by robots. Maybe an interesting way of thinking about it is uh, what kind of task can a machine do and how many tasks can it do without any human intervention? And you say the more you can do, the more autonomous you're becoming. But maybe it doesn't matter to give it an exact name on that. And I think there's a, there's a lot of room for now. Now the human is always in the loop. And I think it's going to stay in the loop for a long time, which is going to supervise the robot, going to tell the robot what to do, uh, <laughs> hopefully. Um, and, and that's this. The question that more autonomous would mean to me, uh, the, the robot is able to achieve more with the less supervision. And that's that's kind of this gray zone where where I think we're in, and we most likely, at, you know, you could say okay, um, an automatic uh, this this robot that is uh, swiping the floor is autonomous, but it doesn't do you know it doesn't do much. Um, so, yeah, but if to do more complicated things, you always have a human that at the end needs to make a decision. Just another another clarification. It's just worth mentioning which since I've got white hair, but <laughs> way back when we talked about autonomous robots, it was dis distinguished from automatic robots. So for instance, you'd have a, a big robot arm at a car plant painting the car. And, and long ago, they wouldn't even have much in the way of sensing. So if, a, if you sent something else along, like a person, it would st they would still get painted. So it just had an automatic process that it ran through completely. And what we tend to mean by autonomous in, in the robotics field is really when you equip a robot with sensors and it's interacting with the world. Now, it could be predictable, that interaction, if you, if you could work out every possible thing that could happen, but the world's an unpredictable place. So when you, when you send out a robot with sensors, it's detecting the world and it's acting according to a program. But nonetheless, you couldn't really, I couldn't tell you in advance what direction it's going to go in and what it's going to do. And that's what we call autonomous robot as opposed to an automatic one. That's clear. So I think that's that's it. That's the 10 minutes. That's a nice clarification statement. Um, I think we could go on for minutes and minutes. We talked about what a cyborg actually is. There's so many meaningless terms that we still have to define to cope with um, what the robots will well mean for itself. Not meaningless, but we have to define them. We have to define them, yeah. yeah. I think yeah, it's um, dangerous to anthropomorphize too much where the machine is. That's, I guess, the that's a nice closing statement as well. <laughs> be a bit of an, an, an humble human. <laughs> well, thank you guys, and um, yeah, thanks for listening, thanks for watching. <laughs>